a violent thing. Uh, I'm starting to ramble on here. Um, That's fine. Again, itself is not uh, violence. It is a it's a tool that creates the conditions and reduces the accessibility of it because the way it works is way out of uh, whack. It, it, it's now like going down a tunnel, uh, uh, no, no, a funnel into where the rich are at the bottom part and everybody else is at the top and all the money's going down into it. Hmm. And that right there is a violent act because they're they're raping and pillaging us. They, be, which has been a, a a function of society, well, the monetary system in all its varied forms in history. Hmm. It it gets people to go and do that to other lands and other peoples because they need resources, and this is where it's the key thing: access to resources, you need access to anything that you need. That way, you can, you don't have to fight for it. Don't have to be violent. The the pressures on your parents are so much less, and they can spend more time with you and say, "Hey, how are you? I love you. You're my son. You deserve to be alive." Not shut up, little twat. You know. <laughs> but yeah, it's just. I mean, and the, and the other thing is, a lot of people don't understand about uh, what creates violence. They just want the behavior to stop. They don't want to. Go to what causes that because it's too much work and, and this society generates what, what, what we call lazy thinking. Mm. Well, 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 I'll call it basic thinking unless somebody else already coined the term. But, um, but yeah, it's just, and, th- and that's the other thing, laziness. That's a violent act by itself towards the system, towards the people who continue to perpetrate it because they're, Laziness is just, I don't, I don't want to do anything. It's actually a form of resistance. It's probably the most nonviolent resistance ever. You know, yeah. it, it's kind of, I think, uh, Gandhi did that with when they, I, I forgot what the, what he exactly he was fighting for, but it was fasting and, yeah, it was, uh, staying it was at mainly home. The, the independence uh, of India from, from the from the power of Great Britain, and, you know, that was the uh, main campaign. Oh, okay, okay. And interestingly enough, you want to talk about violence. Every uh, there's violence within the, the local police. Like I've already seen stories about animals being killed, children being beaten, and killed. Mm. There was one where where a pregnant woman was was protesting about her son being in jail and she was pregnant and the cop beat her and she and she had a miscarriage of a six month old baby in her uh, oh. uterus god it was, I, I don't I, they actually showed the video of them beating her I, I, it, it, it's on cop block on Facebook mm. so if you look that up uh, you'll find it yeah, I mean that's that's one thing that uh, that every now and then I see like a uh, a picture that uh, a picture from uh, was it Cop Block's uh, Facebook page that someone has shared and it's sort of like it's sort of like they make it into a little meme. They they got some like text at the top and some text at the bottom and and it's just like this stuff happening every single day and you know videos of you know put, I watched one like earlier this evening of. Uh, there was a cop just like laying into a guy in a wheelchair, just like pounding his fucking face with his fist. And I'm just like, whoa, what the fuck? That guy must be evil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's in, I, he's in a I, wheelchair. Was, you know, I he's hear, fighting something. I mean, oh. it frustrates me. These people are not evil, but it's hard to accept. I mean, I've come to understand that. I know mm. you have. But many people haven't. It's just it, it's it's so sad. It's like you're like okay, I know this shit is here. I know what's happening. Why don't you guys see it? Like you want to like strangle them and be violent towards them just, just for not paying attention, you know, or <laughs> accepting what's right in front of them. It's, it's right there, folks. <laughs> it's like you you end up becoming violent because they're not getting it. Yeah. Yeah, and people that's... wonder why there's ADD and Tourette's and we got all kinds of like problems we got. And speaking of which, I have Tourette's and ADD, and I can say that Tourette's and ADD 
are not like inherent conditions. They're systematic conditions which you've gotten from whatever happened during your childhood. Hmm. Back yeah. to childhood again. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's because because I mean because really that is the, you know it's something that's so overlooked in our culture that childhood is the developmental period of a human being. If there is deficiency of any of our life needs during that period, then that individual will develop in a, you know, in a negative or at least a lackluster way, you know, because they didn't receive that, uh, that input, um, of, yeah. of our, of our needs. And, you know, and violence is one of the coping mechanisms really for, you know, in, at least in this context for, uh, for, you know, ways to meet a life need. Like, you know, we um, we grow to think that uh, that our problems can be solved by using violence because violence has always been in our uh, in our frame of reference. But um, but you know, alluding to to what you said just a moment ago, the the kind of ways that people uh, respond to to this kind of thing, they're they're just very apathetic and very you know, they some of some of them might get really angry and say, "Oh yeah, fucking cops! Why don't they stop doing that?" But they they don't really see the root causality there, and and the need to actually address the root causality of uh, of this violence. Because in, instead, what they do is, you know, because I mean, this was one of the things that. Uh, that I was because uh, I was commenting on a on a post that one of my friends had commented on, and I it was uh, something about the uh, supposedly they found out who it was that beheaded James Foley, and I think James Foley he was the the, the first of the ISIS he- he- beheadings. Oh, um, okay. Yeah. But yeah, supposedly they found out who who the who the executioner was. It was supposedly like this. Uh, rapper from London or something that basically emigrated from from the country to join ISIS or whatever and the kind of comments that people were putting on there I mean one of the most common comments off with his head uh, <laughs> sounds like Alice in Wonderland down the rabbit hole again yeah <laughs> yeah so you know and um and the thing is I mean uh, one of the it's strange how we how we slip into the thinking that we can treat violence with more violence you know one of yeah. the um one of the things that i saw on uh, it, it was on the bbc radio 2's uh, facebook page that whenever they do a topic and discussing on the jeremy vine show they yeah uh, they put a picture up there and there's like all the comments that pe- the people put on and uh, one of the issues they were addressing was uh, bicycle thieves and uh, people would people would say, you know, because the question of the uh, the topic was, how do we solve this problem? And people were commenting on there saying, chop their hands off. And uh, and I would say to them, are you aware that what you've actually advocated is a part of Sharia law? And because these are the same kind of people who would be angry at Muslims. <laughs> and uh, yeah. and I say that's actually called tahir, which is a um, which is sort of like a mid-level sort of like um, punitive measure for crimes such as theft within within Sharia law, and uh, and they wouldn't recognise this, so they just. <laughs> but um, but no, I mean the the point I'm making here is that uh, we we feel emotionally affronted by being exposed to the results of this file of of whatever act of violence that we've witnessed. And uh, it, like, say, for example, if we're personally affected, then we have a negative emotional reaction against that, and we respond with, what have we, what have we been exposed to since childhood? Violence. Yeah. So, <laughs> it, yeah, it's, I don't, I don't yeah, sorry. blame, I don't blame movies or video games because that's just a small part of it. It's not one thing. So it's, it's just like there's the, the thing on Facebook about this kid who's a fan of the show Dexter. I'm not sure if you're familiar with it. Ah, uh, I, I it's, just read about that earlier. Yeah. 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 I was reading that too. And this kid, uh, said that it influenced him that, uh, 
to go and kill his girlfriend and mutilate her. But it's like that's not the sole cause. So that that, that that's kind of like suspect to me. I mean, every every time I see some that that they have one cause, yeah, I'm suspect on that on 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 who's writing it because it's like it's not one cause. There's a multitude of factors, and it, and it's ongoing. It keeps mm. it, it's stuff that's been happening again for centuries. It's just the chain of effect, the individual expression of the problems at large, you know. So, uh, uh, and speaking of which, speaking of which, what a lot of people don't realize either is everything is connected to, to everything else. You know, everything is connected to each other. There's all kinds of. Uh, it's like your body. Your nerves are connected to the d- different parts in the body to make them cause things to happen. They're all c- connected to one another to make them work. Everything from the blood to the intestines to the brain, the heart, lungs, liver, everything. And they're all interconnected, passing stuff around to help each other work, to work together. Hmm. Now, behavior and stuff like that, all this stuff may be negative and, and crazy, but it's all working together and it's – foundation its brain is the monetary system right now as of right now and this is like the the breeding ground for all the violence that we have now the other thing too is um what's the now there's different types of violence you got those who are whose incentive is based upon grudges they've had since they were child these are the premeditated type of things or these okay and then you got the the knee jerk re- reflexive type of violence, which is somebody pretty much responding to an emotional stressor they've had for most of their life, and it's something that they just can't stand, and they go beat the crap out of somebody, sometimes to death, all mm-hmm. because of that one trigger, which was so powerful. Then you have got the people who do things because of an outside external incentive. That would be, in the, in the case of all the cops we're seeing around the world, money. Believe it or not, they're doing it because of money. But mm-hmm. they got to survive too, just like the rest of us. And since they're in the upper hand, they're going to do take the advantage of getting the money to feed themselves. Unfortunately, they're not looking at the long-term consequences of that. You know, mm-hmm. like what if a mob of people decide to go and kill all the cops? I mean, that that's not good. No. No, I mean uh, well, people. People aren't encouraged to to think about the uh, the, the long term repercussions of uh, of any of any particular behavior. Because I mean, for one thing, you know that individual is less likely to uh, to be subject to those ramifications, and um, and also you know the it's. Uh, People would be far less inclined to, you know, to uh, you know, stoop to violence if they if they were privy to, or in the ver- in the very least aware that they would possibly, you know, suffer the uh, the long term consequences. Yeah, and I, I, and I wonder how many of those cops actually know what's going on. You know, what's mm-hmm. really driving the factor? If they know and they're still doing it, then there's one of two things. Either they are in with the whole thing or they're afraid for their own lives and their family about exposing what's going on. So that's where you got your difference between those who stay in and become a part of it and the whistleblowers, you know. Mm. And the whistleblowers, thank God for them. You know, oh, yeah. at least they're, they're, they're giving us the proof that we need. But then you... You, get, you hear people talk about, like, oh, yeah, I already heard that. But use that to your advantage. Don't just say you heard it before. Like, what the fuck? The <laughs> Lord. Yeah. You've been waiting for this shit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, um, I mean, I guess that, that response, in, in a way, it's a sort of a protecting of their own, their own sort of, you know, uh, reality. Because, uh, you know, we... Uh, if it's something that we like to hear, then you know we we just soak up new information. But if it's something yeah. that troubles us, and if we're already aware of it, then 
we're all, um, you know, it's almost like the person is saying, okay, I've already gone through the stress of processing that in my brain and the, the effect that it's had on me. I don't want you to dick send me through that again, thank you very much. <laughs> you know, so, yeah. I mean, it's a, you know, it's, it's a shame that people have that, you know, emotional reaction. You know? Yeah, well, I have uh, an example here. Like, there, there are people, if you feel like something strange about the position you're in or the air you're at, folks, Get the hell out of there. And I'll give you an example of, of one of the many times that I did not listen to the urge of my brain pushing me in the other direction mm. or going to a different direction. I was walking home from the doctor's office, and I was a half a block from the train station when I got jumped. I just came from the doctor's, and I got jumped. Mm. Go figure that shit. And... Uh, um, what happened was I was across the street. I was walking towards the station, and I had the chance to go right across the street when the light was green. But I waited for the light to go across the street, and, and ahead of me was a whole group of kids that looked really suspect. And my dumbass, instead of going towards the right, I went to the left of them, and I got punched twice. No, punched the nose, then elbowed, and then hit in the back of my head three times. And I was standing there. Blood was like all over the wall, the ground, and gushing all over my jacket and my hand. And it's it's like if you feel something's wrong, you gotta act upon it. But sometimes you can't recognize what that is. Mm. And some people they feel something's wrong and they don't see what's in front of them. That could be wrong because it's usually right there. You know, something's right there, and you can. It's kind of like I. I'm not sure if there's a chemical reaction or something, but your your brain, your senses can pick up body language. But you got to be, I guess, for lack of a better word, in tune with your senses to see what's going on around you, just for basic survival needs. Yeah. You know, I mean, there is a level of survival in this society because of the, the violence we had, with, especially when it comes to the lower and poor classes. You know, and... and and I, my doctor was in the worst neighborhood in Philadelphia, which is where I'm from. That's where it happened. And as a result, I have a slightly offset fractured nose. Yeah. Um, but luckily, when they when it when it broke, it stayed aligned, only slightly off. They they they, they didn't have to re-break it. <laughs> oh. Yeah, they didn't have to. Um. But yeah, I mean, and and that's just my example for physical violence. I can even go into verbal and mental violence if you want. Yeah, go for it. Uh, perfect example would have to be my mother's ex-boyfriend. Uh, from uh, the last time we actually had a big issue with him was uh, now. This is going to be a pretty long topic. Is, is there anything else you want to mention first? Or? Um, well, I mean, we'll we'll wrap it up when uh, when we run out of steam. So go for it. Just keep going, right? Okay. Um, this guy was with my mom for I think it was thirteen years. My mother grew up, uh, had a very low self self esteem from for whatever reason I don't really know. It's not my it's not my concern because it's I wasn't there. I, I'm not going to pry into that. But I I did get permission about this story here because I was at the last year of it. Hmm. So. Uh, and that's what I'm going to explain. The last year, we ended up moving over to his house. And mind you, everybody knows this guy is a total douchebag. And, I mean, again, this is – unfortunately, it's not his fault, but he's just like – he was just like his mother. I mean, she was just as bad, if not worse. And his – this guy was so abusive to, to my mom. It was just like he would be sitting on the computer – doing his thing. My mom had no interaction with him most of the time. And whenever things went down or he got drunk, which was pretty damn often, uh, he would become verbally and mentally abusive to my mom. My mom felt like she couldn't get anybody else. You know, It's really sad, but luckily she finally broke the bond. Because at one point, he was going to propose to her, and my, my brother and I told my mom, mom if, she, if she ever married him, we'll never talk to her again. So she never married him. Yeah, uh, she 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 chooses us over everybody else, so uh, I'm glad for that. I, mm. My mom's awesome, but yeah, um, <laughs> but um, 
pretty much uh, the whole year we lived there. Our brother was in and out, but whenever he was there, he saw what was going on. We had a cat that uh, was pretty cool, but uh, she's coming a bit later for this topic. Um, but I had seen within one year, just in that year, how much crap, how much shit my mom went through. And at the time, of course, I'm thinking this guy's a total asshole. Fuck this guy. He, he needs to be uh, thrown out into the ocean and, and, and drowned like 30,000 feet. I mean, I was just, I mean, that's my own violence towards him without actually saying it. Yeah. You know, that right there is violence. I mean, violence, violence, it, it, it's nothing but that. And one day, after a year of all the bullshit we went through, okay, uh, my mom and him were arguing, as usual. And our cat was wanting to go outside. Of course, we weren't trying to let her outside. My, my mom's ex-boyfriend at the time decided to just, like, open the door and kicks her out the door. It's like, I was, like, mind blown. Like, really, dude? He walks back downstairs and starts arguing with her again. And I walked to the basement door, and I said, did you really let her out? Like, like I was trying to, like, really? He said, yeah. I'm like, motherfucker. And I punched the, uh, I ended up punching the refrigerator, which was a really hard plastic and dented it because that, 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 that pissed me off. And I'm, I wasn't a very strong kid back then. Wait, no, yes, I was. And, um, I, 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 I didn't I, realize I, I, your I, I, own I, strength. I was actually weightlifting that year. So I, I just remembered. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I go outside, I have the cat, but ever since then, till the time we moved out, he has been on my ass because I called him a motherfucker. Hmm. And this guy, it, it's, it's like he was looking for, looking for bullshit to begin. He wanted every inch he could to do that. And hmm. sadly, this is, this was the environment he was under growing up. And I mean, every, every time from the, well, of course, me ignoring the whole thing, I didn't really pay attention to him trying to attack me. I didn't give a shit. I mean, I totally didn't care. So I was oblivious to it until the day we moved out, which is the biggest event yet up to that point in time. <clears throat> so as we're moving out, he's giving her a whole bunch of shit, yelling this and that, right? My stepfather uh, just went back to the house to get my grandmother to bring her down to help out, I, I think it was. And here he is yelling at her, blah, 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 blah. And I go up the stairs, and I'm just trying to grab my stuff around. He starts yelling at me. <laughs> and, of course, I'm yelling back right at him. And it comes to the point where it's down. I come downstairs and still yelling at him. I have my hand on the wall, a, a wall with, which he just got done finished cleaning. And he tells me to get my hand off the wall. So in retaliation, I start squaring my hands all over the wall, okay? And then he comes downstairs and gets in my face. I'm like, what, what? And mind you, this guy is like 350 pounds and six foot two or three. I, I was, I'm like five, eight, okay? And at the time, only 200 pounds. So this guy, and being much older than me, mind you, he's 50, he was 52 at the time, and I was 18. You know, and the, 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 this guy doing this, at the time, it's like, what the hell is this guy acting like this for, you know? <laughs> but, yeah, he actually ended up pushing me out the door. Now, since it rained today, we had hardwood floors. I couldn't get a, a stand or a grip to do anything. So I got pushed out trying to keep, keep balance into my brother onto the concrete ground. It was only three steps, but it was still a big fall. And it's like, really? So he's yelling at me outside. Outside, it's, it's like, dude, really? Are you really going to be hit with that in public? And you can tell people were starting to watch. And and if it got any further than that, the, the neighbor was a cop, and he would have jumped in to oh. uh, stop that. But uh, I don't know how well he would have fared since 
he was skinny like me at the time. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, it's just he started talking about all kinds of crap all up until he left for work. Like really, the whole time, it's like, how do you keep something like that up? That's a lot of effort, you know. And mm-hmm. sadly, it's it, when you really think about it, he had a lot of social and emotional malnutrition. Mm-hmm. And when I when I met his mother, I seen exactly where it came from. His father was cool, like he was the only sane one of the whole family. <laughs> and he even told my mother to like leave him, leave his son, because he's causing so much stress for her. Yeah. I mean, th- this was the only guy who was sane. I don't, I don't know how he stayed sane in that family, but shit, that, uh, it really he was able to handle it. But I noticed too, in the later years, he started to really yell back at his wife because she kept talking a lot of shit, just like her son did. I mean, it was just, I don't know. It it was the tough, it was one of the toughest times at the time. I think for my mother, for me, it was just, I, I was just, it took me Three years, actually until about a year and a half ago, to finally get over it. I was just so filled with rage from that dude. But that was on top of being picked on throughout my whole life, you know. <laughs> mm. on, so it was, and then the frustration with, with my father. But my father isn't abusive; he's just alcoholic abusive. So, but he's not like uh, uh, verbally or violently towards me or my brother, but. With him, it's kind of like the opposite kind of uh, issue. It's more like a, a growing up neglect or something like that. But yeah, it's just – I've seen a lot of shit in my life. But I know that's nothing compared to some other people who have gone through, through some worse shit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And and that's the thing. I mean, you know, the, the suffering that we that – that a lot of us endure in our lives and uh, you know it's something that we we tend to just come to accept i mean uh, we, yeah you know, it's, it's almost like uh, we we just see that as you know that just becomes you know the, the water in <laughs> yeah it, it becomes yeah. The, like the the water in the goldfish bowl and um, well, and we need to actually be shaken shaken out of that uh, that mindset to say look you know yes there's violence in the world you do recognize there is violence in the world but instead of you know just you know generating all these justifications for why we shouldn't do anything about this violence you you aim to just do nothing more than just stick your head in the sand like an ostrich and uh, and just you know, go about it because, you know, as I said, you know, we're creatures of habit, you know, unless we're, you know, severely threatened then we won't really do, do much. And especially if it's, if it's something like, uh, you know, like say for example, for me, um, on the, on the landmass known as uh, the United Kingdom to, to hear <laughs> about, to hear about an act of violence like somewhere in the United States, then, you know, it's, it doesn't, affect me directly even though you know the hearing of the hearing of it obviously there's the there's the the mirror neurons that enables the empathetic ability to put yourself in that other person's uh, shoes but it's something that i'm you know if i hear about a police uh, an american cop beating someone then i'm not the one who's been beaten it's just yeah. that what i'm actually experiencing is my own emotional sort of uh, reaction to hearing about it so um so well, it, uh, i'm sorry uh, uh, if i may yeah, um, yeah. uh with that i think from what i have found is if you haven't had some kind of experience as that person some variation as what the person who's receiving that violence it's going to be kind of hard to, to, to perceive it compared to actually going through it, which you'll be like totally probably blowing your eyes out, you know, mm. as opposed to, uh, you know, to just be like, Oh God, that's so horrifying. <laughs> you know? Um, but yeah, it's just, okay. Uh, I'll let you continue and then I'll probably 
Grouch has something else to say. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, so yeah, the the idea here is that um, that you know dealing dealing with this topic, it's one that's extremely emotionally charged. It's something that has oh yeah actual negative uh, negative re- reperc- 